bump or fist bump to especially uh, the one that uh, new uh, newcomers here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for. We are ready to uh, listen to the word of God. Normally we have uh, this sermon in Bahasa, but uh, because today is a bit special day, so I'll try to bring it in English. Hope you guys okay. If who needs a translator, uh, <laughs> we have translator Rocco. Maybe can help translate if you need it. But uh, if not, then let's just start it. Uh, okay, so. This is the first week of March. So in the March, we start with a new uh, theme again. It's called Listen Well. Over the past uh, months, we have learned about humility and we have learned about being serpent, serpent of God. Today, we want to continue our study from the book of James, which is uh, taken from James 1, first 19 until 21. I'll read the first. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. I repeat, yeah. Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteous of righteousness of God. So get rid of all uncleanness, uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness, and with a humble spirit receive the word of God, which is implanted, which is able to save your soul. Okay, so we are called to be disciple, right? Uh, in the Matthew, it says, all the Christians, we are called to be disciples. We are called to uh, tell the good news to all other people, including the non-believers as well. Because this is a really good news that Jesus has saved us, died for, uh, for, uh, for our sins, so we can be saved. But if we don't know really well how to spread the good news, then we can be stumbled into uh, we can run into a stumble block, uh, batu sandungan. Yeah. If we don't know how to uh, properly spread the news, we can uh, become a stumble block. I'll give you a, a illustration like this. There was a one time there was like two tribes of Indians are ready to start a war, right? Mm. There are tribes, uh, two tribes ready to start a war with uh, all the everybody ready. But before they start the war, they decided to have a talk. Okay, so only the chiefs talk to each other and they make these rules. Whoever hold the talking stick can only talk. Mm. The rest of them must be quiet. If you don't hold the whole talking stick, you can't talk. So they start doing this uh, talking with using these rules. In the end, after hours and hours, they decided not to have a war because they have solved the problem. No one's are talking while the others, are, uh, no one was talking while the others are talking as well. So everybody is listening when one person is okay. talking. Okay? So every good conversation starts with listening. Right? Imagine if we, if I try to speak right now here and you guys are start talking <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah? What's gonna happen? Well, either you don't, you can't listen to me or I cannot even deliver my message as well, right? right? So, one has to listen and the other one has to do the talk. Listening is one of the skills 
that needed to build relationships. Amen. Amen. Where, everywhere you are in the in your family, at work, at school, you need to have the skills to listen, right? If you don't have skills to listen, especially in your marriage life, your marriage is not going to do well, right? You need. That's why today we are learning about these three skills. What can we learn about these skills? First is quick to hear. Okay? Who had ears to hear, let him hear. This is, if you read in the Bible, there's a lot of things Jesus said in here. Because Jesus wants you guys to listen. Who had ears to hear, let him hear. You know, there are a lot of people like to listen, right? In Indonesian, it's terms what? Whooping, yeah, <laughs> or eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah. Those are the ones that are quick to hear, actually. You don't even tell them to hear, they, they, they learn to, to hear whatever conversations behind them, right? <laughs> they are following the Bible, Bible, actually, quick to hear. So, we hear because what? We hear because we want to know and we want to learn something. Is that correct? Right. If you don't want to know, you don't want to learn something, then you probably don't want, don't want to hear. Right now, you want to you want to learn something from from the God, which is passing through by me. That's why you are hearing right now. If you don't interested, then you probably just leave the building, or you might even play uh, your phone right now, right? But I can see everybody here is doing good so far. Yeah. <laughs> Proverbs 1 5 say, The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the persons of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to the truth. Baiklah orang bijak mendengar dan menambah ilmu, dan baiklah orang yang berpengertian memperoleh bahan pertimbangan. When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. Right? If you talk, then you already know, you already you speak what you already know. You cannot talk what you don't know. Right? But if you listen to someone, you may learn something new from him or from her. There was a war in America uh, in 19, those uh, Vietnam War, 1960s. Back then, the CIA was uh, reporting to the the general, saying that, "Look, you guys, we cannot win this war against Vietnam because they know the CIA has been in the in the field and they know what's going on on the field. The generals in the U.S. they don't know anything." They have been, these generals has been advised by the CIA like, we don't want to go with them because we will lose. But the generals didn't care. Like, no, we can bomb them. We can bomb them. So, they went to war, right? What happened? They can't bomb because what? Everybody's hiding under the bunker. And America lost, actually lost the war, right? A lot of soldiers died and finally it, it, they didn't receive a victory in Vietnam. So, listen to understand. You may you may be listening, but you don't understand. Right? I repeat, you may be listening to someone, but you don't understand what the person is saying. Here are some example of poor listening habits. We learn from the poor listening habits first. First is not listening to understand, but to answer. Okay, whatever the person say, we, we don't really care, and we just answer back. We, and then hearing only what you want to hear, right? Because you already have this mindset. A, when we give you suggestion, no, try B. Say, no, I only want to hear, you say A. If not, then leave. Impatient, when we hear, we are being impatient. And then pretending to listen, but our mind is elsewhere. Okay? 
you may be looking at me, but I'm <laughs> thinking of that word already. <laughs> and stubborn, right? Again, or hearing but not doing. There's a lot of time I told to my sons, like, hey, do this. And he hear it, and he said, yeah, but he's not doing it. Right? You tell him again, do this. He said, yeah, but he's not doing it. That's not hearing. Okay? There's a illustration in the Old Testament about uh, King David. This is what uh, quick to hear means. Is you need to act. Back then, King David was uh, going on the war and then he was uh, hiding from the Palestine. So when he was hiding, he was really tired and he was thirsty. So he was lying back in the cave and there was uh, three of his best soldiers was over there as well. So King David was just like saying, oh, must, be, must feel good to drink water from... Uh, the from the temple of uh, Bethlehem. He didn't command, right? He didn't command the soldier. He just said, all oh, must feel good to, to drink water. The three soldiers, because they hear, they did it, get the water from the well and bring it back. That's what quick to hear means, right? Even though you did not being a uh, uh, David didn't tell them or what what to do, but you know what to do, you do it. That's what quick to hear, mm. right? Same thing in the Bible. You read the Bible. Even in the Bible, God say do this, but you may not be doing it. But when you read it, you need to be doing it. That's right. what quick to hear means. Once you learn something from me today then you act on it, you do it, okay? Are we quick to listen to others? Are we quick to listen to God, okay? Do we hear the Word of God every day? Do you read the Bible? And do you have uh, the willing to read the Bible? And how do you, how do you read the Bible and how do you pray? It's important, right? When we pray, what is praying? Praying is the double communi uh, is communications back and forth between us and God, right? Most of people pray, they just talk and talk. God, I want this, I want that. Uh, please bless me, bless that, that. But you don't, most people, they don't really take time in the quiet room and try to listen what really what God's really want to say in your life a lot of people just like do most of the talking and we talk 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 finish <laughs> that's not how we pray right we pray we talk to God and ask for his wisdom and he will tell you he can tell you if you pray in in the in the empty quiet room and you will find the answer. He will Amen. speak to you, to your heart. Amen. Learn to listen to God and obey. Understand it once and do it. A good marriage is when the husband and wife listen to each other. Okay? When you talk to your spouse, look, look them in the eyes. Right? Amen. Don't just, uh, when your wife is talking, you do this. Uh, play or reading newspaper, right? That, sometimes that distracts me. When I talk to even my wife also, like, can you just stop while you're doing and listen to me? Like, yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we do that. We, we try to multitask, but that's not really a respectful way. Look them in the eyes and talk, right? Resist, resist distractions. Your phone, newspaper, television. Restrict, restrict that. And when the other person finish talking, then you start talking, right? Wait for your turn. <laughs> and learn the body language. Sometimes, you know, 
they have a funny body language, yeah? <laughs> or funny face. When they start to make a frowny face, then you know what you need to do, right? You need to be quiet and shut your mouth. Listen to understand. Not just listen, but understand. Right? Yes. It happens to me when uh, I was in the kitchen and then uh, um, uh, my wife told me, you know there's a bowl of mushroom on the top, put it in the stove. You know, put it on, uh, you know, in the stove there are like a two tray already, like, just put it on the bottom tray. So, my understanding is, I just, uh, because the bowl is itself a uh, glass, so like, okay, I'll just put and put it in the bottom tray, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, what she meant is, put it and then put in the tray and then dump it in the bottom tray. Like, yeah, there's a lot of things that bad thing, bad communications can happen in your family, right? Amen. And that can start really what a war. <laughs> Just like, the art of communications is not in your ability to speak. It's in your ability to hear. Okay? If you can't communicate to, well to someone, you can see how you, you expect to communicate to God, the one that you cannot see. I repeat, yeah? If you cannot communicate to someone that you can face, how you can communicate to God mm. that you cannot even see? Mm. So, quick to hear, is number one. Second one is we learn about slow to speak. Uh, this is the good one. Slow to speak. You know the reason why God created humans with two ears and one mouth? So that they quick to listen and slow to speak. Okay? We have two ears to listen and one mouth to speak. So ideally you need to be quick to listen because you have two. Okay? But now, nowadays, it's, it's not like that. When we l listen to something, we quickly pass it on. Yeah? <laughs> Gossip, yeah? <laughs> Before we even know the truth, we already pass it on. Hawks, yeah? When we read something from WhatsApp, you know, no one knows the truth, and we just like, Forward, 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 yeah. <laughs> Who's the king of forward here? No. Don't forward things that you are not sure if it's true or right or not. Yes. Because, I don't know in New Zealand, but in Indonesia, you can get accountable for things that you forward, mm. right? Mm. It's gonna come back to you. Don't spread the news that you are not sure about, <coughs> the truth, okay? Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Okay, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> so, does it mean that we cannot talk much? No, you can talk. As long as what you say is the truth and you can uh, have held accountable. Okay? And what you say is not I idle word because it's here it's written here in the bible that a tree is identified by its fruit mm. if a tree is good its fruit will be good if a tree is bad its fruit will be bad the broad of snakes how could evil men like you speak what is good and right for whatever is in your heart determines what you say a good person produce a good things from the treasury of a good heart and an evil person produce evil things from the treasury of an evil heart and I tell you this you must give an account on judgment day okay for every idle word you speak the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you be careful on what you say okay this is in the Bible you will be held accountable on the judgment day. You know, this story is about the Pharisees. When they, they saw uh, Jesus was uh, healing uh, and 
healing and also uh, uh, mengusir uh, mengusir setan. They tell the devil to go away, right? He cast out the devil, and this Pharisee said, "Oh, of course he can cast the devil because he is the son of the devil himself. That's why he can cast out, cast the devil out. That's what this whole this whole paragraph is about." Jesus said. No, you cannot say things like that that you are not even sure of. Be careful on what you say. Okay? What is idle word or idle talk? You can say, well, one is human questioning God. Alright? You can't, if we ever question God, that's idle talk. Two is like gossip, right? Or Fitnah, uh, talk that is not biblical, or boasting talk, right? You are boasting about yourself, smooth talk to deceive people, right? You can be nice in front of people, but in the back, in the back, you are stabbing them. That's idle talk. Everything. A tree is identified by the fruit. We have learned this. Again and again, we are identified by our fruit, by the words that coming out from our mouth, from our heart. Right? It's easy. It's really easy for us, for me, to identify, like in office or outside, who is a believers or not. Just listen to what they say. If you hear a lot of beep 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 beep, nah, that's not really true believers, right? If you are truly believers, you don't have that. Uh, you can't cast, uh, speak, casting out like that. Or do you have a double life? Do you have a Sunday life and a Monday life, right? On Sunday, you are holy. You are you, you you come here. You speak nice, but when you are on Monday through Saturday, you speak like devil. You 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 cast out people. Don't. That's going to be a stumble block. You know you are here pretending to be holy, but when you met people outside, you talk different way. What if someday they they look at you mm. outside there? What's going to happen? Mm. You hypocrite, right? Mm. That's what the Pharisee is called. So whatever you are doing, do not do double standard. Change. That's what God wants. Change. We as a leaders, as a pastors, even disciples, right? When you are called. To to spread the good news. Yes, the good news is the truth, and the truth sometimes can be harsh, right? Especially to the young believers, even to the non-believers. Sometimes, when we give the truth out, it can be really mean. But we need to learn. We need to learn how we say, not just saying out and. You know, again, it can be a stumbling block for them. Like, how can we Christians talk that way? Right? We need to understand. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Control your tongue. In James three, it talks more about. Controlling your tongue. You know, tongue is really small, right? Mm. Just like a, a car or a ship. How do you drive the car? You just using a small steering wheel. Same thing with a uh, in the ship. You use small rudder, right? You can turn the ship around with just that small thing. Mm. That's how dangerous a tongue is. Mm. A tongue is like a flame of fire. It can set the entire forest. Or the entire church on fire, really. 
I've experienced that here. <laughs> James 3. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. Wow. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. So if you worship God here on Sunday and you, you curse people on Monday, then that's not right. It can't be right. Either one is fake or the other one is real. Okay? Think before speaking. What you say, you can never take it back, right? It can, it will be recorded forever. It's just like you know the cork board. There's an il illustration that I've read. You know when you say something bad, something hurting against other people, it's like you are stabbing a knife into that board. The knife will stay there until you say sorry. Right? When you say sorry, you can pull the knife out. But there is already a hole in there. Right? Yeah. And you cannot fix that hole. It's every, every person that you hurt has that hole. Maybe you, you, you can say, yeah, but I already asked for forgiven and doesn't it forgive means that you forgive. Yeah, some people do that. But forgive does not mean amnesia, right? <laughs> we are human. We we are supposed to forgive. Yes, we are kids to forgive. But whatever you done to me in the past, I will still know, and I will be taking very cautious about that, right? Think before speaking. Think before posting on social media. Yes. Right? Yes. Whatever you post on Facebook, Instagram, it's going to help you accountable. More dangerous than what you speak. Because they can screenshot and they are safe. <laughs> you can go to jail. <laughs> Husband and wife. Uh, think before saying. Especially, especially when you are angry. Be slow to speak. You don't want your words to be recorded by your spouse, right? <laughs> it's not only what you say, but how you say it, right? Learn to speak nicely. Don't yell. Learn to praise and respect your spouse, right? Do not look down your spouse. Don't even compare. You know, sometimes spouse compare other spouse, like, oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, the one that laughed probably killed you. Right? Don't say, oh, my, uh, she can cook well or she does this and that. No, what you say to your spouse is gonna hurt your spouse because you are comparing your spouse to the other spouse, right? Instead, you praise your spouse like. Everything. Because we learn about this, right? Wife is that spouse, husband and wife is in Ephesus 5 say for wife this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For husbands, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. Again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So there's a mutual relationship here, right? But again, wife needs to be submit to the husband. It's written here. So choose your words carefully and honor each other. Give praise. You know, sometimes it feels good when you do something and your other Give praise, right? Oh. 
And last, the last point is about slow to anger. anger. You know, people make mistake. Sometimes they did it purposely or unpurposely. People make mistake. Some people have its own character as well. You know, you can meet people that talk uh, meaning, meaningful, or some people that talk slowly, nicely. You just have to understand them, right? The one that talk. Ah, 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 you, you just need to know, oh, yeah, that's his or his or her character, right? So we need to understand that kind of person. Do not take it serious. I mean, like, sometimes when he talk, she talk harsh, we just say, oh, she has good heart. That's just the way she talks, something like that. So we need to understand people's character, right? Sometimes they say things that they are, they are not meant. Say. Sometimes they do things that they are meant, they are not meant to do. But don't let me make, don't let this mistake, you know, to provoke your anger. Learn, learn to understand and to do self control. He is who, sh he who is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who is quick-tempered, exposed, and excels his foolishness. Slow to anger means that we need to have time to think. We need to before we anger, we need to have a delay. The greatest remedy for anger is delay. So before you angry, you delay it first. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Every three times. Then before that, then you probably not work being angry again, right? Does that mean that we cannot be angry? Yes, you can be angry. Okay? Jesus himself angry when he turned the tables of the sellers in the temple, right? When those sellers are selling stuff on his church, he just go to them and he, he turned those tables away. Said, he said to them, My temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. You can be angry as long as there are four things. One is, there is a purpose. What is the purpose for your angry? Well, I hope the purpose is for you to be bold on sins, on immorality, or injustice, or on ungodly behavior. Right? That's how we can be angry. We cannot be angry to offend people or to embarrass other person. But even if the person is wrong, we cannot offend them. You know, it's, the Bible teaches that how you can confront your other members, right? You can go to them and speak face to face. If they don't want to listen, then you can bring witness and talk to them. If they still don't want to listen, then you can bring other church members or even the whole church to talk to them. If they still don't want to listen, then forget it, right? But we cannot point out their mistake, embarrass them, no. There's a way we do that in the church. Second, there's a logic reason for you to be angry. Right? Sometimes in the office you can see, or at work you can see people angry for no reason because they have problems in the home. <laughs> they bring the problems at the home with their wives to the office. And other vice versa. They have problems at work they bring the anger to the home and the kids were the one that suffered from it. You need to be logic. Why are you angry? Sometimes when you ask, why are you angry? I don't know, I just feel like <laughs> The third one is, there is no repeat. When you angry, do not repeat. You know, it's not like Netflix, you can just watch a recording. When you angry, just angry for that mistake. Yes, again, uh, as I mentioned, we are not amnesia, but do not bring people's past mistakes into 
um, apa you adding more bumbu flavor. Lah. flavor. You cannot add flavor from the people's past mistake, right? Sometimes that happens to Indonesian, right? Angry one thing, but the whole time mistake in the past is bring it out as well, you know? Like, no, 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 do not hold grudge, okay? Do not hold bitterness. Do not. Once you forgive, you forgive and let it go. And the last one is, you can angry if you are sure you are right. Okay? You are sure that you are right. I'll tell you a story of David again from two Samuel. You know, one day Nathan was a, a prophet at that time. Nathan talked to David about, Hey David, there's a story of a rich man and a poor man. The rich man has a lot of lambs and the poor man has only one lamb. The poor man loves the lamb so much, he even uh, nurtures the lamb, even sleep with the lamb. One day, the rich man has a company coming, a guest coming in to the end. This rich man decided to cut the lamb, but he cut the poor man, uh, the poor man's lamb to for the fish. Then David was angry. Why? Why? Why he did? Why he did that? Because at that time David was king. Right? Oh, I'm going to send someone to uh, to get that rich man, and he can be killed, uh, called to death, and give uh, all the lambs from that rich man to the poor man. That's what David said. David's reply. But then Nathan said, "That man is you." You know what? You know the story about David and Bathsheba? Yeah. Mm. You know? David has many wives. Mm. But one day when he saw Bathsheba was bathing on the river, I think, David called her and slept with her. And then not only that, because Bathsheba pregnant, then he called, he he made sure that his her husband Uriah died on the war, right? And because of that, God gave all David's wife. Yeah, I will give your wife to another man before your very eyes, and he will go to bed with them in public view. So all the wives of David was. Uh, used by other men in the public. So the standard that you use in judging which is the standard that you will be judged. Okay? You, when you judge someone, you make sure you don't do that. Because when you are judging people, that same thing will be judged on you. You know? And it's saying in the Matthew, the lock, you know, the lock in front of you, you cannot see, but you can see the speck far away on your, your on your friend's eye. Kalau in in Indonesia we have that, apa? Gajah di depan matamu nggak kelihatan. Elephant in front of your eyes you can't see, but you can see ants far away. That's what this thing means. Right? You can point out people's mistakes, but you cannot see your mistake. Mm. This is dangerous, right? Everyone can be angry. That's easy. But being angry, angry with the right persons, with the right degree, at the right time, for the right purpose, and in the right way, it's not something everyone can do, and it is not easy. Think before you, angry. Husband and wife, slow to anger. Okay? We, humans, and we make mistakes. But when you angry, be angry, but do not sin. 
Do not let your anger shame, cause you shame, or nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge, nurturing anger, or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. You can be angry, but do not hold it. Right? Forget about it. Tomorrow you see that person again. Normal. And do not hold grudge. And do not sin. Okay? So, take a deep breath before you angry. I'm, uh, I'm calling the President Rusev team to come up. So we have learned three things today. One is quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And then a tree is identified by the fruit. If the tree is good, the fruit must be good too. The tree is good because what? The soil is good. Right? And how do you prepare the soil so that your tree inside of you can be good? First, we need to confess our sins and ask Jesus every day to forgive us. We need to repent. And then we need to meditate on God's love and grace to us every day. Every day we need to be humble before God, saying that everything that we have, everything is coming from God. God is the creator, right? God is the omniscient who knows everything, omnipotent. Who has power over everything and omnipresent? He can be everywhere. Those three things that we need to meditate daily, day and night. Humble before God. When we did all these things, then we will make our soil uh, more uh, fruitful then your tree inside of you can be fruitful. And when your tree is fruitful, people will see from outside what kind of person you are, what kind of uh, action or words that coming out from your heart. So, which tree are you? Let us uh, prepare our heart today in a little bit moment, we want to receive the Holy Communion. Let's close our eyes and give a moment.